right, welcome to Right On with John Crane. And up next in the What's In Your Bag tool series is this right here, this Japanese folding saw. And this is just a great little compact saw to have in your tool bag or tool kit. Uh, and it is the younger brother, I should say, to uh, this type of Japanese saw right here. Now this saw is just a little bit too big for me to just carry around all the time in my bag. So this little saw uh, is just great for little general cutting purposes. You know, it's it's not the, the greatest saw. If you wanna do some real fine woodworking, you grab a Japanese saw like this, but this is just a super handy uh, little saw to have in your tool bag. All right, here's a uh, close up look at this saw right here. And uh, what's unique about this little saw right here being a Japanese saw, if we open this up, we can see here that the, the blade here is very thin. And that makes for some uh, very efficient cutting as a, a thicker blade, you can imagine, uh, takes more force to move through the wood. And you can see uh, these teeth on here are like razor sharp. And typically these Japanese saws here, they cut on the pull stroke and it's uh, a very efficient way of cutting. And uh, so this is just a great general purpose tool to have in your tool bag there, uh, nice and compact and uh, folds up there. Um, I got this one in Seattle at Hardwick's. That's a great little hardware store in Seattle. They've been there for many, many years and uh, they're online as well. I think it's Hardwick and Sons uh, or hardwickandson.com. Uh, another place to find something like this is the Japan Woodworker and they're in the Bay Area there and they got a great selection of uh, Japanese saws too. And uh, so many good uses for this saw here, you know, cutting wood, um, flush cutting. Uh, sometimes when I'm uh, using like that spray can foam, I end up using this uh, to trim off the foam after it uh, oozes out around a door or a window or the, that type of thing. So this is just a, a great general saw to have in your tool bag there. I also want to go into a little detail on this Japanese saw here. Now, this is one of my favorite tools to have. And even though this isn't in my tool bag all the time, uh, I just wanted to talk about this saw for a little bit. Uh, same thing, right? Nice Japanese saw, cuts on the pull stroke. And there's several different kinds of these Japanese saws. Here's uh, one that has a backer on it. And this blade is even thinner. Uh, than this Japanese saw blade. And this has uh, also what's known here as a plunge cutting tip on there. So you can plunge into some wood, you can start in the middle. Uh, it takes a little effort and a little skill, but uh, just a, a great saw to have. And these also have interchangeable blades. So you can get uh, blades that have a different amount of teeth, finer, coarser, you know, for uh, cutting uh, different types of projects there. And uh, I'll show you how these uh, saws cut, and then I'll show you how you change the blades in and out of these. So uh, let's go over to the vise. All right, here I am over at the vise, and I got a little piece of uh, cedar clamped up there in the vise, and I just wanted to show you how these uh, Japanese saws cut. Now these cut on the pull stroke, and uh, of course I got a, uh, a piece of cedar in there. You ever see those uh, like wood splitting videos where these people have these wood splitting contraptions and uh, they're showing how well it's splitting the wood. But I swear to God, every one of those videos I've ever seen, they got the straightest grain wood possible. Like you could just split that wood with a butter knife. No wonder it's working so well. I was just thinking about that because I'm a, uh, cutting one of the softest woods possible here, a piece of cedar. So anyhow, I'll show you how this saw here cuts on the pull stroke. Now I just like to start this saw, guiding the saw with my fingers here in the back. And unlike a Western saw where you're coming over the top here and you're sawing like this, the Japanese saw 
lot of times I come from underneath right here and I hold my fingers on the blade and that kind of guides the blade as you start the cut. Right? It's a very accurate cut. Cuts very nice and smooth. Here's just another angle of the cutting action there. And as far as uh, changing the blades on these saws, uh, the way I like to do it here, and there might be a few different techniques, but is uh, you can see this blade here is trapped in between these two pieces of metal, right? And so what you do is you, on the edge of a table or a block of wood or that type of thing, you tap the saw blade just like this, right? And the blade starts to come out like that, right? And you pop the blade out. And then to put it back in, right? You slide it in and it engages right in there. And you put a little pressure and then you just do the opposite. You tap the back side of this now on the block of wood. And that locks the blade uh, right back in there. All right, now there's different styles of these blades and how they lock in. And uh, here's one right here that's got a little set screw. So you just back this set screw out and then the blade just slides out just like that. And you see it's got like a little stop there where the set screw locks the blade in. And, uh, and as you can see, like look how thin this blade is. This blade gives uh, amazingly fine cuts, uh, you know, you just think of all that Japanese uh, woodwork and all the uh, work that they've done on those temples and the joint fitting. And uh, it's just great to have uh, these types of tools to make those precision cuts. All right, and then we just take this and slide this right back down in there, tighten up the set screw and you're good to go. So it's, it's pretty cool. You can buy a handle and then you can buy lots of different blades to go in here. And uh, these are my two favorite ones that I have right here. And then of course the, the little folding saw. And uh, this little folding saw gets beat up quite a bit. I use it a lot for all kinds of different projects. And so every year or so I buy another one of these because uh, it gets pretty dull. Sometimes uh, I'm cutting against some different surfaces that just dull these up and you know, it's fairly uh, cheap. I think this was like 11 bucks or something over at Hardwick's. Uh, all right, here's another great use for these uh, Japanese saws here. Say you got a, uh, a door jam, right? And uh, you want to install some hardwood flooring and you want to cut off the bottom of that door jam, right? So just imagining that this here is uh, your door jam in the house and you're bringing in some hardwood flooring and you push this up against the door jam there and then you can come in and you can hold this saw incredibly flush here to the top of that flooring there, cut off the bottom of your door jam there, and then slide that wood flooring right under. And they do make some of these uh, Japanese saws here where the teeth are set to one side. So you wouldn't scratch uh, like the bottom surface type of thing. It only cuts on the top side and... Uh, that's pretty uh, useful. So uh, another great use, right? Flush cutting. And, uh, you know, another example of that is maybe you got some dowels or something that you're plugging into some wood and you want to cut those off flush. That's another uh, just great tool for cutting off a dowel that you put in, you know, where you've plugged some wood. So the Japanese saw, just a great all around tool there. And, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, maybe you already got a Japanese saw or maybe you're gonna head out and you're gonna pick up one for yourself, but just a great addition to have in your tool bag. And 
Hope you guys like this video. Uh, like and subscribe or leave a comment. Tell me what kind of uh, Japanese saws you got or uh, what your favorite saw is. All right. I'll see you guys uh, in a day with the next tool from the tool bag.